Okay, so I know everybody out there is going to want to know a little bit about instruments because bass players by nature are, you know, victims of gear acquisition syndrome. <laughs> and my understanding is on tour you are wielding Sadowski basses. I have been since I got out here six years ago because um, I'm a Fender style. I mean, I have a 62 jazz bass mm -hmm. that is my favorite instrument that I've had since 1975 and most people know me uh, with that bass in my hands. Uh, I, but it's, it's very precious to me and it's not, it's passive for one. Um, so I wanted to get an active bass and, and my friend Michael Rhodes from Nashville and my friend um, Gary West from Nashville. And I, I had a great awareness of Sadowski basses. I just had never tried one. Mm -hmm. I ended up buying the Will Lee models. Nice. And the only um, difference in it to mine in a standard Will Lee model, it has a PJ configuration in it. So it's got a preci precision pickup in the front, jazz in the back. Nice. And but they're active and they're beautiful and they sound amazing. And you're playing on flat ones, right? I, I do use flat ones. Just nice. the, once again, that's me trying to because I don't play with the pick. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyran play with the pick. I'm not trying to copy him, but it's important uh, when you're trying to emulate somebody, sure. I think, that gives me more of a muted tone. So Nice. And I like flat wounds. I hadn't, you know, I'd been a round wound guy my whole life, you know, especially since I was such a Chris Squire freak and John Entwistle freak, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I like most, or like a lot of guys, for 30 years, 30 years played round wounds, and then I started playing flat wounds, and it's a different animal. Totally. You can't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a brand of preference? Yes, I use D'Addario's. 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 And certainly on tour, you're using, I'm sure, a direct input box and ear. No cabinets, box, yeah. No I, no. But when you're not, what, what's your cab, what's your amplifier of choice? Man, I've had a little, and I this amp has been crazy good. I've had this little Gensben 300 shuttle for mm -hmm. years with one 10 inch speaker. And in my quartet, which is sometimes a quintet, I have drums, banjo, acoustic guitar, fiddle, electric bass. And I mean, it's not like, we're not loud like a rock band, but mm -hmm. I mean, that amp is astounding of how well it covers everything and the tone is great and um, so that's what I've been using forever. Though I recently just checked out uh, an Aguilar tone hammer with one of their uh, 112 cabinets and nice. I'm, I might buy one of those. One of the lightweight ones? Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, the older we get the more appeal there is to the lightweight <laughs> yeah. eight gear. Um, we yeah. were at the last NAMM show and uh, Dave was uh, hoisting the cab around with one hand. Yeah. And I'm going, okay, if Dave can do it, that means <laughs> that's a They don't weigh thing. any, I think they weigh eight pounds. So, Ugh. you know, and when I do my deal, when I do John Cowan band, you know, all this goes away. The buses, mm -hmm. the, the uh, road crew, the guitar techs, it's, you know, I do everything. The equipment. Oh, totally. Book the rooms, <laughs> drive the vehicle. It's old school, man. So I, I need all the help I can get. So having a little lightweight amp is the best. Totally. Um, any other key parts of gear? Any pedals or anything? I know a, a lot of the... the newer I tell you, for years I've used an EBS octave pedal. Mm -hmm. And I, I use it so sparingly, it's not even funny. But I do use it a little bit. And I've got an MXR Chorus. And I, I have an envelope filter that I use, which is also an MXR. Uh, um, and like, I just barely use any of those. There's one section of one song that I use the envelope filter mm -hmm. on. There's another section, another song that I use uh, the chorus on, and the same thing on a different song that I use um, for a couple bars, literally, uh, the, um, the um, octave divider. Nice. So I'm not, you know, I certainly love effects. It's just you know, it's not. It's only appropriate occasionally for me. And I think, especially when you when you go back to some of the days that we were listening to music, a lot of the sound was the instrument itself. You know, and so yeah. you didn't see Paul McCartney with a big pedal board in front stomping <laughs> on stuff. It no. was it was pretty much whatever was coming out was the sound you were getting. You know, and maybe oh uh, by by vibrato or tremolo or something you know that that was about all there all there was yeah so. i mean there's some great stuff out there all the bootsy collins stuff with yeah. the, with the mutron and i mean there's some 
hellacious, amazing bass playing with, with pedals over the mm -hmm. years. Um, yeah, it just, you know, it's different strokes. Gotcha. And I, I always, there's, there's always the classic argument about four or more strings. <laughs> every time, every time I put up a post on our social media that has more than four, four strings, I hear dogs barking in the distance. Just yeah, you know, I just like, like five a... strings. I, I don't. <laughs> I've owned one a time or two, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I did that thing when I first got a five string that I think is a natural tendency was just play the the B string all the effing time. Yeah, yeah. Until it drives everybody you're playing with crazy. But <laughs> I'll tell you a really cute cute and true story. I have a friend in Nashville named Mike Doster and he played with B.B. King for about 18 years. Always played a precision, uh, four string precision. Mm -hmm. And when the five string basses came out, he decided, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a five string. So he showed up one day at Soundcheck and he had his brand new five string. And they go through sound check, and he's over there, and he's playing the B string on everything. And after the sound check, and this is a true story, after the sound check, he went over to BB and he said, "BB, what do you think of my new five-string bass?" And BB literally said, "One more string, and you're fired." <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, I think he was kidding him, but no. he's like, "One more string, and you're fired." I'm getting tired of that. There you go. There you go. So I don't know. It it has its place. I mean, I hear mm -hmm. guys play eight string basses and six string basses and five strings and it's un it's beautiful it's beautiful it's just uh you know it, it it's not something that i do i i i agree and i think the interesting thing about you know especially extended range bassist it is the tool of choice for their expressive approach and you know the fact that there's a guy we have a, a very good friend one of our our uh bass people in chile igor saavedra plays an eight string and his playing an eight string doesn't keep anybody from playing a four string here. So, you know, you kind of play what you want to play and, you know, do what you want to do with what you got, you know. My friend O'Teal was playing these Yamaha six strings for a mm -hmm. while. And he, you know, he's such an, ama he's such an incredible player that he could pull it off and it was, it was beautiful. It was just plain beautiful. Totally. Because he has the ability to do so. You know, I wouldn't want, know what to do with two more strings. I, I struggle with four. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think the issue of weight comes in to be a factor as well, especially yeah. with your classic six string setups because it is so massively heavy yeah, that's um, yeah. that, you know, you start seeing signs of neurological damage by having this thing strapped on oh, absolutely. hours at, at a time. So, you know, the practical side of it too is, you know, weight and I know, again, as we age, uh, I, I talked to Chuck Rainey. We were talking about his bass, and the main thing he said about it is it's light. <laughs> is he playing a five sometimes? He, he's playing a five sometimes. He's playing an exotic, and they've got it dialed in so that it's just sweet light for him. He's the master, man. Oh, he's one of the masters. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. And But as he was talking about it, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, at an age where I want to be, you know, wielding a 14 pound bait yeah, <laughs> so I, I want turned, something like I just turned 63 yesterday oh, so by the way congratulations birthday you. yesterday you know you saw it here on bass musician we were here for <laughs> for John's birthday so anyway this will be an addendum sure. to our, our already conversation we know people want to hear about bass thank you John again for taking time thank you Raul. to talk to this passionate topic that is our gear and having us here at the Doobie Brothers, Richland, Washington. Um, catch them on tour if you have the opportunity. You know, you will not regret it.